Welcome everyone to another fun, hopefully educational Linux live stream here about a fun thing that is the Linux out of memory process killer that you may or may not have noticed, heard about or stuff. Uh, so what this is doing and uh, how I wasted last night a uh, couple of hours for like nothing. Um, in this overkill workstation build previous videos I until yesterday was running the 64 gigs of memory because 64 gig memory certainly should be enough for everyone this LPX uh, when gen something. Um, I swapped this out with faster ones that uh, are only 32 bit because the faster ones, this ones I overclocked, I think they were rated 3, yeah, 3000, uh, 3000, 16, 20, 20, 38 or so. Um, I massively overclocked those as per previous videos to 3400, I think, uh, 20 or something, whatever. Um, worked quite well, but certainly I wanted the latest and greatest performance. So I got far the fastest ones, money can buy video upcoming, but only half the size. And with all the compilations here of Linux, T2 Linux, this. Uh, amazing uh, source distribution we're working on here for all the architectures. With 64 gig, people always ask me, do you do I really need 64 gigs of memory? Like for what? And this not overkill and stuff. Turns out huh, it wasn't overkill. As soon as I plugged this in, I was compiling yesterday the usual fun stuff here. And my workstation Linux stuff like froze, like Wayland Sway froze a couple of times. Um, couldn't secure shell anymore. And of course I saw it near it's this bloody new memory, obviously went to the BIOS, changed some clocks, did this again, Firefox, Rust uh, stuff repeated unfortunately again. And only after like one hour, of course, obviously when I swap memory, then of course I think it's a bloody memory. Turns out no, it was a freaking Linux out of memory process killer here. Um, what was happening was of course compiling Firefox and Rust, the GCC, link time optimization stuff, LTO processes, and certainly Rust. At times, for example, one Rust Rust process easily six gigs of memory during the compilation of Firefox. So what happens if you have 32 freaking Ryzen 5950X, 16 thread 32, uh, 16 core 30, uh, 32 threads? Um, yeah, you need some memory, right? So it turns out 64 gig for such an high high-end processor, not overkill, it's like what you need, or massive swap, obviously. Um, so that is basically the introduction. The thing is, so for me, this is also, I'm certainly with 20 years Linux experience, I'm certainly aware that they multiple times tune these algorithms because what happens, a little bit educational part here, um, processes like Wayland, Firefox, GCC, also usually more databases or other scientific stuff over commits memory, say a AI application training a neural network um, might allocate gigs of memory this is just bec because we might need this for some matrix math or uh, some database application uh, might just allocate like say let's uh, some say eight gigs or memcached or whatever. So stuff might allocate more than needed and not access this. And the Linux kernel, uh, one of those kernels, not all kernels do this, but the Linux kernel supports over committed memory, that is applications ask for memory and it's not yet allocated. So the, this is delayed, delayed allocation until it's um, usually at least depends on the code pass and stuff. But what this means is that ap applications, you can run more applications than you may have necessarily memory. And also they might have allocated much more memory, say for example, GCC, uh, Firefox, they might have allocated already 30 to 64 gigs of memory, but not yet using this. And when they use this on a page basis, uh, the CPU with this instructions accesses this load store to some not yet mapped page causing their memory allocation. And I find this a little bit counterintuitive. I, I certainly very well understand that they made, the Linux kernel developer made an attempt to um, improve the usability as in killing the best process. So you would expect that maybe the process first not having memory gets killed, which might be the most logical and keep it stupid simple thing, but not so in the Linux kernel. In the Linux kernel, they have some fancy heuristics and each process has a out of memory 
kill score and based on this score whatever is killed i find this for me this is also a recurring theme of stuff not super totally amazing in the linux kernel world um, maybe maybe i even tried to patch linux kernel to use a much simpler scheme or i just finally write my own microkernel stuff leave me in the comments below for me it would be a little bit more deterministic and usable to kill what uh, uses the memory like in my case yesterday gcc and rust c um, because it's this way i thought because also yeah 2021 your wayland and sway stuff is killed or your xorg server and you lose your freaking it's like yeah amazing perfect out of memory heuristic score stuff it's like killing the xorg wayland sway window manager and secure shell demons like yeah but trying to keep rust c and gcc alive it's like yeah Two thumbs for that achievement. Um, I certainly understand. I don't want to downplay this. This is certainly very difficult, which why the best in the industry still have not come up with a bit better heuristic for this. I might want to argue, though, that maybe in 90, if not 99% of the cases, keep it stupid simple might be the best and simply killing the process that needs a memory, which, again, Sway, Wayland, Xorg was running, Secure Shell D was running, maybe just kill GCC. Of course, the difficulty, just to outline that I fully, I'm fully aware of the difficulties, the difficulty is that in a difficult, different server scenario, your MySQL and Apache stuff might also use gigs of memory. So, of course, my oversimplification for desktop workstation use might not suit all server workloads so maybe in some server workloads this out of memory score works better of killing the right apache process or mysqld although i would probably argue in a server uh, scenario micro server or serverless or the modern latest and greatest virtualization galore stuff maybe it's still best to kill what freaking last allocates memory and um, leaves this complexity out of it because last but not least even in a complex server scenario even if this heuristic for apache or light uh, lightning http or any other of uh, microservices is better to kill i would argue even in a complex server scenario whatever that might be classic servers or new microservices uh, Docker's containers and whatnot, you probably don't want anything to get killed and maybe trying to be fancy and kill something intelligently may totally not be worth it because at the end of the day you want nothing to be killed and if something gets killed with out of memory it doesn't really matter much. You probably want to memory balloon or migrate the services to other containers with more memory and stuff. So yeah. Um, I didn't do years of research, just also, um, of course, the last years I've not seen this at all because all our servers usually have enough memory, like 64 gigs of it. Um, but yeah, so much to um, latest and greatest state of the art, fastest DDR4 memory. Anyway, leave me in the comments below what you think. Um, did you have amazing experience with out of memory process killer stuff? Um, maybe the, the, OS, the, the only valid use case or only useful use case for this might be if you are developing and you wrote shitty code and you have an out of uh, memory leak and like while you're developing your new fancy application gets killed away because it's leaking gigs of memory or something but even then probably um, having the most simple out of memory scheme of killing the last location thing in this memory leak scenario might still trigger the right thing. But anyway, um, that's it for this video. Just wanted the usual vlog style of uh, keeping you hopefully informed, learning a new thing of out of memory killer is a thing and over committing. And uh, yeah, anyway, um, Ace, uh, Ace attack writes to use ECC memory uh, workstation. No, I don't um, for the simple reason, um, cheapskate and testing. This was not ECC. Also, ECC usually comes in slow uh, varieties. Um, even this one, I, I uh, specifically wanted to see with this one, and not a paid advertisement, by the way, just so random shit we source and buy here ourselves. I just wanted to see how much more performance you can get out of a Ryzen 5950X with 
um, the fastest memory on the market versus the largest of last year. Um, and it's uh, obviously some percent. You probably want to share, like, and subscribe for this update to come. Um, I will probably, due to the nature of our massive Linux compilation and YouTube stuff, uh, build an even uh, because, yeah, uh, for those who are longer subscribers to this channel, you know, I was thinking as a Mac developer with um, shameless self promotion stuff of having retail applications here with Exacode on the market. I was actually um, thinking whether I should purchase a Mac Pro, but spoiler alert, I didn't because it was certainly overpriced garbage. And once upon a time, we brought one in 2008 or so, the Mac Pro 2.1 for 6,000 something euro after a 20% dis developer discount. So the list price was probably was 8,000. Uh, we got it for 6,000, whatever, something. Uh, dual socket Xeon thing there of Mac Pro 2.1 galore. Um, one of the worst investments would never really want to do this again. And uh, as a recurring subscriber now, not a fan of all the vendor login uh, custom flash and non-user swap of the parts and so on and so on. So basically I saved like 10,000 euro not giving that to Apple. So basically I have a budget of 10,000 euro, so to speak. And fun fact, you can source and buy quite a lot of IT gear for 10 grand. And uh, that's what we probably can still spend this year. Meaning after this, so this overkill thing, so the CPU uh, uh, 1000, the lo new logic board 300, the case a whopping 100, 90, I guess. So memory, uh, something, uh, even this, yeah, 300 versus, I don't even know what this was, 500. So yeah, even with this prices, I've not even spent probably 30% of a freaking Mac Pro. And this thing obviously beats uh, yesteryear's Mac Pro um, in most regards. And we still have uh, some six or 7,000 euro to spend for this kind of Mac Pro budget. So yeah. Um, you can never have too many CPU cycles for compiling Rust. Also, we can stop this because touch build video needs this for this Risk Five. I still need to. Well, this doesn't even support Risk Five yet in that repository. But yeah, you can never have too many CPU also business or typo cycles. And uh, yeah, probably share, like, and subscribe if you want to see a YouTuber, computer scientist, developer building his. Uh, Threadripper workstation. And for the Threadripper workstations, uh, certainly just the summer, I wait for the 5000 series Threadripper. And uh, maybe for the Threadripper, we finally go ECC because uh, this is quad channel or whatever, or maybe th uh, the Threadripper uh, Pro probably has eight me channel memory, maybe. Also, gets a little bit. Um, Maybe let's all always typo. Um, Pro multi H channel, yeah. So Threadripper Pro, the so stuff previously only. Oh, two typos. Anyway, um, not sure. So first of all, I wait for the 5000 series because I certainly don't want anything lesser uh, than that. And um, this will still be some months. And uh, then maybe um, because yeah, with eight, uh, with quad channel or eight channel memory, you certainly. Um, don't see the performance penalty as much of ECC, which uh, you don't get with such high frequencies. And um, in general, ECC might uh, eat your 3% performance or something. So yeah, we will see. Um, I think uh, this Threadripper Pro gets a little bit out of hand price wise. So we will see maybe quad channel for me, but uh, let's see what uh, Summer brings um, because the logic boards also not only the CPU for some 5000 bucks, but also the logic boards and easily 600 or 800 or who knows what. Anyway, that's it for this update, which was actually over uh, out of memory process killing. Again, leave me in the comments below what is your experience. Uh, certainly, back in the day with Sun Ultra Spark stuff, I've seen this more often because, uh, oh, yeah, today obviously you can't build much on a 128 megabyte uh, Ultra Spark or PS3, but back in the day that was like 15 years ago that was still possible. Of course, on such ironically more memory limited 64 bit systems, I've seen in the past memory out of memory kills more often than today, but 
The summary is when it hits, it is super annoying, especially if your graphic subsystem or secure shell is killed away and um, probably I might even look into changing the T2 uh, default configuration if there is some configurability because um, leave in the comments below what you think. Did you do any research? Or I mean, In general, it shouldn't really happen, right? You don't want something killed randomly away. And somehow for me, the randomly of best score usually was the most important stuff like Wayland XORG um, secure shell D. It's like secure shell D doesn't use so much memory. It's like, uh, anyway, we could actually check um, last but not least, and then we are really done. Um, secure shell D. Let's uh, see what is the proc 980. Uh, 10 of 100 startups. What? 983 out of memory. Adjust score and stuff. Let's see. Grab all of that. So adjust minus 17, score zero, adjust minus 1000. Hmm. Anyway, all I can say is yesterday this was killed away. So huh? out of memory score 666. That certainly ain't any good. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon for all the next fun stuff, including Threat Republic of Summer and Risk Five Unmatched stuff to come soon. Actually, uh, one update. Ace, uh, Ace Attack writes X570 doesn't support ECC UDIMs, so I'm trying to find 3200. On what do you mean with East? Not so. Ah, does, ah, does support ah. Yeah, sorry, I thought you right not support yeah exactly so um that is uh, like unofficially supported on ryzen by amd but uh, yeah leave us a comment below if you got this and um i could source some but again so 3000 as uh, this were 3000 also not ecc and i wanted something significantly faster um again this overclocked 400 megahertz and spoiler alert this maxed out 3800 14, 16, 16, 36, they're already pretty um, binned by the vendor, so this doesn't overclock much more. So the old ones I could, so the regular plain old vanilla stuff, I could overclock 400 megahertz. This preciously binned stuff doesn't.